Hello folks, in this tutorial we're going to be looking at the shatter effect in Adobe After Effects. It's a fairly popular effect that's um, very good on pretty much any layer, whether it's video, text, images uh, or shapes, and although it can look a little daunting at first, there's some fairly basic things that you can utilize on its settings to get yourself easily started, and I'm going to cover some of those basic settings here. I think once you've got the basic settings under your belt, the best thing as ever with After Effects is just to start to work your way through it and, and play with it and see what it can do. But certainly, in this tutorial, hopefully there'll be enough to get you started in enjoying the effect. Now I'm going to begin by just going to Layer, New and Solid. But you can, again, you can use it on a video piece, you can use it on text, but I'm just going to go for a plain solid just for the demonstration of the tutorial. White solid, I think will do. And click on OK. And as ever, if you're applying effects, click on the layer, go to Effect, and the shatter is under Simulation, and it's just second from last at the bottom. So we select that, and this is the first thing that we're presented with, which can be, you know, a bit confusing for the, uh, you know, the uh, After Effects user, if this is the first time they've gone in there. We're presented with a wireframe diagram of the shatter, and if we just scrub along the timeline, you can see it working, but the wireframe isn't always the best way to look at the work that you're doing. So probably the first thing you're going to want to do is click here and go on Rendered. And we can get a better sense of the shatter taking effect. Now, if you've ever tried to use Shatter before and not really got a handle of it, probably the thing that's annoyed you most, most of all is the fact that it shatters immediately from the beginning of the timeline. So I think the first thing we're going to do is look at how do we prevent it from shattering right at the very beginning. Now, for this, I'm actually going to do a little bit of work in the timeline. I'm going to open the white solid here, open effects, and then open the parameter of the shatter effects. And if you look here, shape, force one, it's the same as the parameters up here, they are basically the same, but for the little tweak we're going to do, it's probably going to be easier to do it in the timeline. So first off, to prevent it shattering, take your time marker to zero, open force one, set a keyframe for depth, and set the depth to 10. If you set it to 10, as you scrub through the timeline, you'll see no more shatter. So we've prevented the shatter from occurring. Let's go forward to one second. And I'm going to press here to repeat the first keyframe. So at zero, my depth is, is on 10. And if I scrub forward to one second, my depth is still on 10. Now, if I want the shatter to happen immediately after one second, I can just nudge forward a couple of frames like so, and I put my depth back to 0 0.10, and as you can see, the shatter begins. So, 10 for depth at the beginning, go forward a second, or however long you want to hold it for, make sure you repeat another keyframe for depth at 10, then nudge forward a couple of frames and set depth to 0 0.10 and your shatter is up and running. Let's um, collapse that back up because we can probably do the rest of the work up here in the effects panel. Probably the next thing that you want to look at is opening the shape here and choosing your pattern. And there's a number of different selections um, from basic squares. You can change it to a shatter of squares um, to puzzle. A strange one that, I don't quite know what you'd want that for, but to be honest, probably the most popular ones really are bricks, which is the default, and glass. And glass does, of course, look like a, a proper shatter when you scrub through it. So I'm going to leave mine on glass for the time being. And as ever with After Effects, a lot of it really, ladies and gentlemen, is sort of playing and getting a sense of what it is that you want. And most of these are fairly self-explanatory. If I scrub repetitions up, there'll be more glass shattering. You can see it. Far more pieces shatter. But as ever, you know, I don't like to overdo effects. So I'm probably going to put that back down to its default, which was, uh, I think that was 10. 
The direction of the shatter can be altered as well, so it can be flying off, spinning off in different directions. And the one that actually I think is quite an interesting little one to play with, I'm just going to drag this back a little bit, just so as the shatter is only just beginning, just about there, is the origin of the shatter. So if you click on here, a little crosshair will come up and this will decide where the shatter occurs. So you can have the shatter beginning up in the corner, or you can have the shatter beginning down here, or even off screen, but that's going to probably throw things out a little bit more than you want. But I'm going to leave it at the moment back in the center. I'm going to go forward a couple of frames and just explain this one here, which is the extrusion depth. If you scrub that up, the pieces will get thicker and thicker, which is probably the closest you can actually come to getting anything like 3D and After Effects. OK, that'll do for shape. Let's go back to Force 1, where we actually set those keyframes for depth. Now, if I scrub forward quite a bit, one of the things that you're going to notice is actually pieces of the shatter have been left here. And you can change that by scrubbing up Radius. Radius essentially will make the shatter smaller. If I take the Radius right down, it's only going to punch out, as you can see, a small part of the effect, which might be quite nice. You might want to punch it out and just have another layer showing underneath. Or you can crank radius right up and the entire layer will shatter. I'm going to put mine down to this sort of about 0.20 should do it. And the strength is sort of the violence, sorry, not the right word, but the, the speed or the, the dynamism with which the shatter will force out across the screen. You can look at physics, and again, the rotation speed, if you adjust that, and I'm, you've got to be a little careful with that one, the more you crank that up, the faster the shatter pieces will spin in space. And it's very high, they really will fly around quite a lot. Our randomness, again, will alter the nature of where they all fly off in screen. But again, I think if you make them so random, it won't look like a natural shatter. Um, now, gravity is the one that probably is the most interesting, because if we actually look on gravity, that one I will point out to you gravity here. If you watch the shatter, the pieces come off the screen, but they do fall down. Gravity has taken over. But you can alter that. That's the one I often do like altering. If you put gravity on zero, they won't ever fall down. The shatter will actually explode towards you and keep coming outwards, always towards the screen. Like so. The other ones, like camera position, will actually alter where the shatter and the layer are in relative space to the monitor. So as an example, if we just went to Y rotation, it actually is going to start to spin the layer around. You can actually see it in space. And again, it, this is probably the closest you might get to 3D. Um, you can spin it sort of that way. So you can have a layer shattering sort of in, and it's sort of a fake 3D, but it's in sort of a faux 3D space. Or you can spin it around like so. But I tend not really to muck around with those because in truth, by and large, I want the layer to be a sort of flat 2D layer and just the shatter to come towards me like so. Now some of the other things you can play with, such as lighting, you can, again, there's a lot to run around with here. You can actually, as you can see on the layers here, if you look at them, they've got different light beams hitting different portions of the shatter pieces. And that can all be adjusted here. So as an example, intensity, you can crank it right up. Whoops. Just try that again. Light intensity. It is as if there's a fake light on it, or you can actually dim it right down. But again, I'm, I'm going to choose just to leave that, I think, back to where it was. But as ever, play with these settings and adjust according to taste. Right. It was a fairly basic introduction to Shatter. There's probably a lot more to explore, but as ever, it can be quite useful for sort of compositing layers because you've got a layer here, it can shatter, and you can have a layer underneath coming through that punched out shatter hole that you've created. But as ever, click on some of these, adjust, play with it, and enjoy. Okay, folks, hope you found that useful. See you in the next tutorial.